Hello! We're going to make solitaire in Unity in under two hours. And I don't even know how we're going to get started. I, I do know. We're going to, we're going to start with the, with the images of the cards. But first, solitaire. How does solitaire work? What is it? And how are we going to create it? Uh, we're going to create it with normal game objects and sprites that we drag around and drop in our scene as opposed to doing it inside of Unity's user interface system. Uh, we're going to create a scriptable object that's going to represent one card. And that will we'll be able to look at that scriptable object and say, okay, look at that card. What's your value? What's your suit? What is the sprite I should display? Are you face up? Are you face? Any information you might want to know about a card we'll have in a scriptable object. Uh, and then we'll have uh, stacks of cards. The deck could be a stack of all of the cards, um, but stacks will be visible on the screen and we will be able to pull off of a stack and put onto a stack cards. And they will display as a, uh, you know, as a single sprite or they'll display as a, uh, like do a little something like that. Or, you know, the classic solitaire thing. And you grab the top card and put them on and off. Cool, so we need sprites for the cards, images. We need a data object to hold a card, and we need a component that will represent a stack. Once we have all that, we'll deal with dragging and dropping items around, or cards, on and off stacks. And once we have all of that, we will then start actually implementing some of the rules of Solitaire. Um, but we'll start with just simulating cards moving around a table. All right, let's start with the graphics. This is the easy part. I have an empty Unity project in 2D, uh, but that's not what we need right now. What we need is Kenny. Kenny, if you ever just search Kenny game assets, Kenny is, a, is an actual guy named Kenny, and he makes uh, lots of game assets that are public domain, you know, creative copyright anyone can use for any reason for game development. So Kenny's great. Lots of stuff to check out that Kenny has created. Um, some new software I've been playing with recently called Kenshape they put out a week ago. But they have a playing cards pack. Uh, let's download that. And we'll throw that into our um, project. Unity Solitaire Assets. I'll just throw it there for now. Let me unzip that. We don't need a zip file in here. Probably only one. We probably don't want all of it, <laughs> but it's fine. We we'll use just the large ones. Let's before we even open Unity and re-import all these files, um, we will. We we'll use the PNG. We could use a tile sheet, but yeah, we'll uh, we'll get all that. We'll probably should leave the license around just so we remember where these things came from. It's really nice. If you have assets you're getting from somewhere, you're trying to remember all your sources, all your credits that you need to include, just keep in a little text file with the assets in the, in the folder. And we'll make images and we'll put that in there. Ah, let's call it sprites. Right. Unity is going to import all of our sprites. Let's make a new folder for our scripts. And we'll make a new folder for our scriptable objects. And we're going to make a new scriptable object. We're going to do this from Writer, because Writer is pretty nice. It has, uh, it's going to autocomplete some code for me. Go to my scriptable objects folder, right click, add a, it doesn't seem to know this is a Unity project yet. What's going on? It's because I did not open Writer from Unity. All right, go to Scriptable Objects folder, add. Yes, yes. Do, do the work, writer. Figure out what's going on here. There, now we got a little menu here. Our new Scriptable Object, and we'll call this a playing card. Great, let me delete that. Let me delete this file. <laughs> uh, card. And card, menu name, card, order zero. 
Great, I didn't feel like typing all that up at the top, uh, so I let writer create it for me, because <laughs> I'm very lazy. So we have a scriptable object. It is not extending mono behavior, it is extending scriptable object, and this will define our data type. We'll need a value. Ace is one, Jack is 10, 11, right? So we'll, we'll just use an integer for our value. We could use an enumeration, an enum. Uh, we need a suit, we need a suit. We should use an enum. Public, enum, suit. Uh, let's make a new, let's make a new class in our scripts folder. We'll call it card utility. Public, uh, does it need to be static? I don't know if it needs to be static. I don't know what it is. It's public card utility. We'll make a public enum for suit, hearts, spades, clubs, diamonds. Probably some like official order those go in. Uh, yeah. Public card utility dot suit. Suit. Cool. Uh, public sprite face up sprite. Public sprite face down sprite. Top, top and bottom of the card, the images that we're, we're gonna use. And that's probably all we need. Do we need to know if it is face up? Public pool is face up equals true. Grab a little function, get sprite if is face up, return face up sprite, else return Face down sprite. Cool. Um, so we're gonna, I don't know, I don't know, I don't even know if we're gonna use that or need that. <laughs> but we got, the most important thing here is I got some integers, some variables to hold on to my, my object. Um, is face up, is that? I don't think we're gonna need, I think the card stacks are gonna know about if the card is face up or not. We'll, I don't know. I don't know. Public bool is same color. Suit A, suit B. Uh, return true if, if A is equal to suit dot hearts and B is equal to Uh, or a is equal to suit dot diamonds return true is b is equal to suit dot hearts or b is equal to suit dot diamonds. Uh, clubs, clubs, <laughs> clubs. Um, and if A is not I, any of these things, then something's wrong. Okay. Uh, the same suit color. And just a little, just a little uh, function to help us do some logic we're probably going to need to do. I don't know. I mean, I do know. We're, we're going to need that in the future. I probably should wait until we need these things to write them, but I like, I had a guess. I think a guess. If we're writing a suit, we'll probably need some, some, some regular logic about suits. Okay. Uh, okay. 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 Let's go to our assets and make a new card. Hey, we have that option now. Make a new folder for our cards. Make a new 
folder for our cards and uh, in this folder we'll make a new card we'll call it the ace of spades spades ace um, value will be one suit will be spades face up will be oh my gosh they are not numbered Face of spades, and then the face down sprite, we will back. All right. Uh, so now I need to make 52 more of those. So here's where I pause the recording. All right, let me, it's underneath me. Um, here's where I pause the recording and you know, we make a new card for spades underscore uh, two. The value is two. So you do spades. So you do card underscore spades. So two. Face down is card underscore back. Okay. So I have to do this 50 more times. Um, I know some tricks to speed it up, but it is eventually you just have to do that. So time to pause the recording. All right, nine. Duplicate that, rename it to diamond 10, change the value to 10, number to 10, oops, 10, and jack, rename to jack, 11, value to jack, queen jack, 10, 10, 9, 8, 10. All right. Uh, how many? Uh, so it's 51 selected or uh, missing one. Um, king, ace, queen, king, jack, ace, queen, king. Uh, diamond needs a king. Renamed diamond, king, that was 13. King. Woof. What a pain in the butt. All right, 52 scriptable objects. Each are a card. We did it. We did it. The most annoying part of this project is done. We had to make all of our data objects. Now, you might be thinking, and you probably were thinking like a quarter of the way through that process, that that was a pain in the butt and there has to be a better way. The answer is yes, there is. You can make editor scripts that extend the Unity. I would have done one of two things. I would have made a script that just generated all 52 of them, and then I just had to assign the images. Or I made a script where I select an image in the assets folder, I right click and create a card, and it will create it with that image already assigned, go through and put in the values. Maybe even try to like search the string of the image name and do something smart. Um, but I don't feel like it, because we're done. We just had to do it once, it's fine, it's fine. Uh, all right, so we need a way to display a stack. Let's head over to the whiteboard. Uh, head over to the whiteboard and let's talk about how this game's gonna work. I don't even need this. Let's not turn that off. Talk about how this game's gonna work. Okay. So we're going to have objects, game objects, that we're gonna call card stacks. And they're gonna contain a list of card objects. Great. So let's draw that out as a list of card objects. So there's our list uh, in our game object. Uh, the game object is then going to display this list with this, you know, it's also going to have a sprite renderer. The stack is going to say, what's my top card? Let me tell the sprite renderer to render that one. So that's component number two. Um, and then we're going to have our, you know, when we, we're going to be able to take objects off of the top of it and drop cards onto the top of it. Uh, and that will be from a separate game object that is like our card dragging, you know, it's sort of like our mouse cursor is going to be able to click on a stack and hold the mouse button, which will remove the top card and teleport it to that, to that object. And then when you let go, if your mouse is on top of a stack or a different stack, um, it will add it to the top of that one. And if you let go and it's an invalid location, 
it'll, it'll just put it back on the previous thing. So the stack needs some function to add cards on top of it. And it needs to be able to display the top card in the stack. Cool, let's do it. Let's do it. So we're gonna make new empty game object, stack, test. And go to our scripts. We're gonna make a new regular old mono behavior. Call it card stack. All right, I have a cat, eh? he's in my way. Go over here. All right. Card stack, public list of card. Oh, is this card in a namespace? It's in scriptable objects. Well, writer can autocomplete that for me, and I can use that. Writer likes to use the folder names that you put scripts in as namespaces when you make scripts. It's a good enough practice. If you organize your projects well, uh, Okay. Um, and then let's get a private sprite renderer. Uh, and we'll in awake, which happens before start. We'll do our uh, get component. We'll get a reference to the sprite renderer. So our the sprite renderer, and we got one. And we have a list. And let's make a function to display, uh, to refresh the display. If stack.count is, dot count is greater than zero. We need the top card of the, of the deck. Card, top card, some temporary variable to hold on to it is stack. It'll be the last number in its length. So that's the stack dot count minus one. Zero would be first. We'll be adding things and removing them from the end of the stack. Now, stack is a, 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 a there is a thing in, in Unity called stacks, uh, sorry, in C sharp. It's a version of the list that allows you to very easily add things to the top and bottom of. Um, I would normally use that instead of a list. It just is a list with some extra functions for, um, for uh, last in, first out functionality. Um, but we're not gonna use it here because we've never seen it before. So we're just gonna stick with lists, it's fine. Uh, let's just refresh the display every an update. We, can, we don't, we don't wanna do that, we don't need to do that, but we will right now. Uh, all right, and then in my stack test, I'll add card stack. I made it public so I can edit it in the inspector. Let's just add some cards. Eight of clubs and three of clubs. And... Okay, fine. Uh, and then in our game, the background's blue. Hold on, main camera, background. desaturated uh, something like that okay okay we got a nice <laughs> background color we have a stack the stack is at the zero so we should see it on the screen I didn't make a I need to add a sprite renderer to the stack put that at the top I like my renderers to be at the top I don't know I think it's a zero it's because I didn't do anything uh, sprite renderer dot sprite equals top card dot face up uh, oh, sprite. Probably should change what the sprite renderer is set to. That might make sense. Um, and we'll enable it. And then if it's, we'll turn off the sprite renderer if we have an empty, empty stack. We might want to do like a little gray rectangle outline if the stack is empty. Oh, look at this. Okay. Um, it's pretty small. It's going to be blurry. So we want that to be bigger. Uh, so how are we going to fix up the size of our sprites? That's pretty simple. We go to our 
images. Let's grab all of them so we can still edit the import settings at once. And let's actually dig in here and see the properties of this image. It's 64 pixels square, 64 pixels square. So that means that if we were to make our pixels per unit on all of these images, 64, it would, um, it would mean the image would be one unit, probably tall. They're probably letterbox, probably one unit tall. And that's perfect. That, that's easy to work with in terms of unity units, you know. Uh, next, I'm gonna change the filter mode to point. That means it's gonna keep that pixely crispness as it scales up and down. Let's apply that. It's gonna change all of these images. Now we can hit play. And my game still seems pretty small, but it is in fact one unit tall and it's a king. Um, if I were to reorder the stack, hmm. oh, there it goes, it updated. Put the king on, wait, on the bottom. Yeah, so as I reorder the, the cards, it, will, it displays the top card. Brilliant, 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 brilliant. Okay, and if we got rid of them, it would dis it would if you can't reorder uh, in your list, it's because you're on an older version of Unity. That's a new feature in 2020.2.1. Um, list is empty. The sprite render is turned off. When I add a uh, card to it, sprite renderer gets turned back on. Nice, beautiful. Uh, okay, let's now do something else. Uh, let's add a function to add a card to the top of the stack. Public uh, void for now, we might change that. Add card to stack, card, new card, and this will do card dot add a new card, and then it will refresh the display. stack.add new card and then refresh the display. Okay, we're gonna take this out of update and we're gonna only refresh the display when we need to. I'm gonna leave it in update so it does it every single frame uh, for now, but eventually we'll only be doing it on like, you know, on start, you know, with whatever it's been set to by default after it does a shuffle or something um, and so on. I probably should have a shuffle function. Okay, <laughs> randomize a list. How do we do that? <laughs> Challenge for the user. Um, that would be public. And public void add card to stack. Okay, great, I have a stack. Let me add a, let's go ahead and add an empty an empty card. Um, okay, so what we're gonna do is if it's zero, private sprite empty sprite. Instead of turning it off, we'll set the We'll set the sprite to be equal to uh, empty sprite. So, uh, and then maybe I'll make it transparent. Uh, like halfway transparent. And then make it fully opaque when we change it. Um, let's see, just so I can like see it. Uh, and then I'll add a here in the inspector. That'll get changed immediately, but that should go transparent. Uh, it went to null and then transparent because, because it is set to null in here. This needs to be public. 
empty sprite card back. Okay. Boom. Okay, I have a transparent empty card. I add a card to it. It's nice and visible. Too small, but visible. Great. Okay. That was probably throwing the error from before. Yeah, okay. Clear and play. Great. I think that, is that error from before or from now? Well, we'll find it if we find it. Let's add a uh, dragging card. Card dragging? Dragging? Card? <laughs> card dragging? That's not a good name for a script. Uh, card mover. Input. Mover. Card move. Card. <laughs> card mover. I don't care. I'm calling it card mover. Uh, we're going to detect when we click on a card. How are we going, or click on a stack. And if we do click on a stack, which is a place cards go, we will take the top card off of the stack and hold onto it ourselves until we let go. And then when we let go, we'll look for a stack again. Uh, so we need to add a script to our card stack. That is public card, take top card. Um, if the stack count is greater than zero. Stack dot remove. Uh, we'll move the top card and return the top card. Else return null. Okay. If this will end the function, if it doesn't end, that means the stack is empty and we'll just throw a null. All right, card mover. Let's put that under a scripts folder. Um, void, start drag, void release drag. Okay. Public, private, camera. Camera, need a reference to the camera so we can get the mouse coordinates in, uh, In screen space in the scene. So we'll get a reference to the camera that we can use. Um, but how are we going to detect if we click on something? It's kind of an interesting challenge because we, for the most part, we've been doing things like that with physics collisions. And this is going to be no different. We're going to use a physics collision. <laughs> so on our stack, let's add a box collider. 2D. There's going to be no rigid bodies in our scene. Nothing's going to be bouncing around. These colliders are just kind of going to exist and take up space. And we can see our stack there. Let's make it a little bit thinner. On the X. Sure. Um, so I need to know when I click, when I click down, uh, if I've clicked on a stack. So we'll do, we'll make a function, private stack um, is stack here. Vector three, world, not world, position. So here we'll do the collider code. Uh, so we need to get the world position well, we were being given the world position from the mouse coordinates, which we'll do in a second. Uh, we need to know if there is some overlap with the stack. Physics to D dot, what are we going to do? Overlap point. Should that work? Uh, how do I open up the docs? Let's go to Unity. Help, Unity scripting reference. Physics 2D. Uh, 
Circle cast, closest point. Overlap area, overlap point. Look at all these different functions we could be using. There are a lot of ways to do this. Checks if a collider overlaps a point in space, a point in world space, a layer mask, and then some optional depths. All right. So we need, that needs to be a vector two, and we'll just pass it right in. World position is a vector two. And let's say a layer mask, layer stack mask. Uh, layer masks are a way to layer mask stack mask. We'll make that public. Uh, layer masks are a way to identify the layer that it is on. Remember unity layers that game objects have. Um, the layer mask is, a, is a, it uses some clever integer integer math to uh, uh, it uses some clever integer math to figure out if um, one layer is part of a one or more of a optional list of layers. Uh, what does this function return? It returns a collider two D. Okay, collider two D stack. Collider equals, so then our stack would be equal, stack would be equal to the collider component. Uh, and we get a component that the collider component has, call it stack. And we can return that. If the, the thing that we overlap, so what the, the overlap point function does is it looks for any collider in the scene overlapping a point and it returns a the, the reference to the collider object, a box collider, circle collider, whatever it is, some collider 2D object. We then call the get component function to see if it has this stack component. If it doesn't, if it's just like a box, um, it'll return null. If it does, it will return the stack, which is good, that's what we want. So now I have a way to get the stack from the world position. So vector, so when I start my drag, vector two, I wrote a function called start drag, mouse in world space. Uh, in the input class, there is a function called mouse position. Mouse position returns a vector two in uh, pixel coordinates, where the, I believe top left, it might be bottom left, but I think top left of the screen is zero, zero, and the top right or bottom right would be uh, the width and height of the screen in pixels, which is not the position of the mouse in the world units. To go from the screen, which is what the camera is rendering, to the world, which is just in the scenes, you know, scenes position units, we need to use the camera to do that math for us. Because as the camera moves, that will change. So we're going to grab our reference to a camera. This is what we needed it for. Uh, grab a reference to a camera and then go screen to world point. Screen to world point and we'll give it the mouse position. Semicolon. And that will get the mouse's position in um, in world units, in X, Y world units. Doesn't know about depth yet, but our, you know, our collider thing, we did, we ignored depth, so we don't care about Z. Uh, uh, stack, drag, stack equals is stack here, mouse in world space. If drag stack is not null, uh, we'll get a public card. Dragging card. And I think we need a sprite renderer for when we're dragging the sprite. Private sprite renderer. We'll get a reference to the sprite renderer. Great. And we have some dragging card. Whoop, uh, it's in that namespace. It's in a weird namespace. That's, I did that. Uh, whatever. Uh, dragging 
card equals drag stack dot get uh, take. What did I call that function? Take top card. Why is that not stack? Because this is a card stack, not a stack. Card stack. Okay. I typed a different data type that has nothing to do with cards and nothing to do with the code that I wrote. I think I need a reference to the code book. Uh, card stack uh, dragging stack and we'll use that we'll keep that reference uh, there we go. Um, fix that up okay release drag here we will take card stack new drop stack equals is there a stack where we let go? If our, that is not null, new drop stack dot add card to stack, dragon card, dragon card equals null, dragon stack equals null. If not, when we let go, we will re return the card back to the stack that we took it from. All right. An update. Uh, again, we're going to need to fix this up, but we'll just say if dragon card is not null. Right renderer dot enabled equals true and sprite renderer dot sprite equals dragon card dot face up sprite else sprite renderer dot uh, dot enabled equals false. Let's actually take all that code. Void uh, refresh. Renderer and stick it there. And then every time this actually changes, we will call that function. Okay, so we got functions for clicking, functions for letting go, but we don't have any input to do that with. Uh, so if dragging card is null, if we're not already dragging a card, then we will check if our uh, if we push down the mouse button for the very first time. Mouse button takes an argument of zero for the left mouse, one for the right mouse, and if so, start drag. If we are dragging something and we let go of the mouse. Release drag, what I call it, release drag. Sure. I want to make sure I'm not clicking while I'm already holding onto a card. It shouldn't happen because <laughs> the mouse is like a one button input device, but you got to be careful because people can have multiple mouses attached to their computers and you can get weird. You can like let go multiple times in a frame sometimes. Uh, not in update loops, but there we go. Now we got a null reference exception. <laughs> Uh, let's see. So we have a, we have our dragon card. Put that over here. Uh, let's get a second stack, like a few stacks. There we go. Uh, and we'll add we'll add some cards to these. Cool. Null well, reference exception on line 55. Oh, 
if our collider is not null. Is check that we actually clicked on a thing. Um, yeah. If our collider is not null, then we can see if we have a component, and then we'll return that component whether or not it's null. Great. Uh, but the reason that was null is because our uh, stack mask is set to nothing by default. Let's just say it is on the default layer, because everything's on the default layer. So there's our layer mask. We can have it select multiple things, you know, nothing default. It's the same as this, you know, drop down allows us, to, or sorry, this drop down uh, and allows us to, you know, I can make a layer just for cards and another layer for user interface. Great, my dragon card doesn't have a sprite renderer. Let me uh, give it one. It works. Uh, we're missing something, which is that the dragon card. <laughs> we probably need to uh, probably need to update the, the this position of this, uh, which would be in update if we are dragging a card. Transform dot position is equal to camera dot uh, screen to world point input dot same thing we did before input the mouse position. All right, and let's hit play. What's going on with my dragging? Ah, I'm dragging, but I'm, I'm set the Z position is the camera's position. <laughs> That's no good, uh, transform. That position equal, uh, let's save that as vector three, world pause, world mouse pause equals that, equals a new vector three. We'll get the X and Y components of that, uh, but we'll set Z to zero so that we don't, uh, we Yeah, it's not set to the camera's Z position. We only want the X and the Y there. Oh my gosh, look at this. Amazing. Um, let me go to my cards, make these bigger. Or let me go to my camera, make it smaller. Let's take our dragon card sprite renderer and we'll set the order to be 10, I don't know, to be much higher so that it will render above all of the other sprites in the scene. All right. Amazing. We can drag cards around. I think that's nifty. If you don't think that's nifty, I don't know, you know, what are, what are we doing here? Some bugs, right, right? There are some bugs. It's like a glit, there's like a flash. Why is that happening? That's happening because this is not getting updated every frame. We'll just do it every frame. It is. There's one frame where it is starting the drag and turning on the sprite renderer, but not moving its position. Okay. But if we do it every frame, that won't matter.
We can make a bunch of card games. We can do all sorts of stuff. Um, we need to figure out, you know, we can make a big open area that would be like a type of stack that would display things. Um, we can make a child's object of stack called solitaire stack to like show the stack is like a vertical drop down and face down except for the bottom, which would be face up or something. Um, I should do that. Uh, let's go change the, let's go fix that stack code so it doesn't use update. And it will only update when a card is being added or it'll refresh the display. And when we take a top card, it will refresh the display. And, it won't, and then on start, it'll refresh the display. And that way it doesn't do it every single frame. You know, there's no, there's like the only real update code happening every frame is this mouse position check. Um, oh, I made a bug. I made a bug. When I, when I grab it off of the top card, it needs to refresh the display. Right, if it's actually changing, it needs to do it before the return statement, which ends the function immediately. So it never ran it, the lower code. Okay. So next we're gonna to need to add some kind of rule to determine if we actually can drop a card on a stack. So let's add a public Boolean for card can drop go here. Card can go here. Card can be added to the top of the card uh, can go here. Card can go here. It's got to be a better name for that. But we'll take a guard new card and we'll uh, we'll start with this. If it's an empty stack, you can put any card on it. This isn't always true. Uh, maybe it's only the aces at the top or only kings on the empty stack. Um, we'll say, we'll just say true for now. No, yeah, true for now. Um, and uh, we'll say uh, if, so we wrote earlier, we wrote this function called is suit the same color. We give it two suits, we see if they're the same color. For us, we want to know if two suits are different colors. Uh, and that would be if, um, how would we do that? Card utility dot is suit same color between the new card suit and the top card suit if that's not true. And if uh, the new card dot value minus one is equal to the top card dot value. So now we can only put cards that are one value Plus, how does solitaire work? You take the, <laughs> I'm thinking too much. Four is you put a, put a black three on a red four. Uh, yeah, so it would be one, it would be the opposite color and one value lower can go there. Uh, and then if, we'll just, yeah, we'll just put that outside of an if statement so we don't get that error. Okay, card mover, uh, release drag should here, um, if a uh, new drop stack dot can card go here, our dragging card, then we do all that stuff. Um, and we'll return. And we'll take this out of the if statement. Uh, and then we'll re 
refresh the display and then return. Oh, I didn't need to write the write this code twice. That will end this the code immediately. Okay. Uh, return to old stack. We don't check if it's valid on the old stack because we don't know if we're you know if we're grabbing it from a shuffled deck. We don't know about if it's valid or not. All right. So the ten should be able to go on the jack. We're on an empty spot, but the seven should not be able to go on the jack. But it can. Why can't it? We'll move, we'll see if we're moving a card to new stack when we let go, see what it does. Right, that is returning true every time. It's not doing something weird. Top card, new card. If they're not the same color, what's going on? Let me add some more cards. Um, Let's add a seven of hearts and a six of hearts, same value, same suit, and then a six of clubs. Six of clubs, six of hearts. Why is that always happening? All right, time to use some debugging in, um, in Writer. Uh, we're gonna attach the code to the Unity editor using this little bug. Uh, that's going to maybe give a pop-up in uh, Unity that says, is bugging, debugging allowed? Give a little, this icon down here turns blue. Um, then, I'll add a breakpoint right here when this card is, when this function is getting run. Uh, we can go into play mode. And when that function happens, it'll pause the Unity editor. And it'll move me over to my uh, editor. And I can see that my new card is the Jack of Diamonds. And it is getting dropped on, that card doesn't exist yet. Let's go line by line. And we can see 10 of clubs. The Jack of Diamonds is going on the 10 of clubs. That should be false. <laughs> it's going to be invalid. Uh, so it jumps down and it should return false. All right. If we are is a top card, if there's no top card, it should be true. If there is a top card, it should return false. If it's not valid. Okay. That works. I have nowhere to put this card. Take a different puzzle game. Six can go on a seven. Six can go on a seven. Amazing. Amazing. Let's add a feature. Let's add a little integer. Public int at top. Required value of first card <laughs> equals negative one. Yeah. 
Yeah, required value of first card. Uh, that's a good enough name. Okay. If the stack is false, if it equals a negative run. Okay. What are we doing? What am I saying? What am I saying here? Uh, in solitaire, there are going to be four stacks at the top where only an ace can go first. And then there's going to be other stacks where only the kings go. We shuffle those out. Um, so I'm going to have a empty stack will have a required value in order for us to drop a card there. Um, method group, public and typo. Um, so I'll say a negative one means any card can go here. Else, it can only be true if the new card the new card's value is equal to this integer. So if, if we set this to negative one, any card can go there. If we set it to 13, only kings can go there. If we set it to one, only aces can go there. And that should, that should allow this one big function to handle those different card types. So I'll say the, uh, I'll say that all of these have a required value of 13, of a king. And I'll say that this one has a king of hearts. And this one has a queen of opposite value of hearts. Something like that. Um, so now the king can go on the empty spaces, but these other cards cannot, because you can only put a, queen, a king on an empty space. Great. Solitaire. OK. Uh, we should probably render the, uh, the stack as like a stack of cards. You know, like in solitaire when you, when you put them down. This is a break point. We'll take a break, we'll come back. I'm gonna pause the recording. I mean, I'm just gonna pause the recording and make myself tea. Uh, Cause where am I at? We're at about an hour, we're at about an hour. This is like end of part one, end of part one. We made solitaire. I went very fast because the code will be up on um, up uh, for students in the, in the class. It'll be up on Brightspace. If you're just looking on YouTube, sorry, <laughs> code somewhere. You just copy it. You need practice copying code. Practice copying code. Um, I'm gonna. I'll be back. I'll be back and pause.